In this video, I will show you how you can move a bowed joist over. This would be a joist that would need to move over to the right or the left and is not straight. And before I get started on this, if the floor is not sagging or suffering from some type of damage, you might want to just leave this one alone. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have to remove all of the nails from the floor sheathing before you can move the center of the joist joist to the right or the left. And I would imagine this is not a common home repair, not a popular home repair. And another problem you're going to run into is that if you're going to be moving a joist that has a break in the plywood or the floor sheathing attached to it, then you could also end up replacing sections of the floor sheathing. I will explain more about that towards the end of the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of bowed floor joists. That will be these two here. I changed the color on them so they would be more noticeable. And of course the center of the joist here will need to move in this direction on both of these. So let's go ahead and go to the bottom. This is where you're going to be doing most of your work, I would imagine, unless you remove the floor sheathing. Then you could work from above. So next up, let's go ahead and reinstall the floor sheathing where it would be located if the joist was not bowed so that you can start wrapping your mind around the problems you might run into if you're moving a joist that has a brake attached to it on the floor sheathing. Next up, let's go ahead and put the brakes in the floor sheathing where they should be to provide you with a better idea of what you're going to be dealing with. So here you can see where the breaks in the floor sheathing aren't going to create a straight line and in some cases might be cut at an angle to match the curvature of the bowed joist. So in my example here for simplicity I just simply left them straight and moved them over. However you can see where the break on the plywood isn't going to be fully supported by the floor joist. Now if you can start with a straight floor joist, great. If not, you're going to need to use some type of a string or laser tool that will allow you to straighten the joist. And it wouldn't be a bad idea if you don't have any blocks to put some in to provide you with a little more support. Now keep in mind this floor joist is still going to be nailed to the floor sheathing. And then once you pull all of the nails or cut them. You can always get a sawzall or another tool that will allow you to cut the nails in between the joist and the sheathing or get a nail puller and pull them out from above. And again, this could damage the floor sheathing, especially at the edges here where you're going to have more nails. And these nails are going to be located in a weaker spot that will allow the edge of the plywood to get damaged more easily. And the purpose of putting the blocks in will just be to provide us with a little more support or something that's going to prevent this joist from moving if we need to use it somehow to force this joist over. And in some cases you're going to need to install a few more blocks. However, I don't think this is going to be necessary most of the time. And if you are starting from a straight joist, you can simply measure the distance at the end of the joist here and then use that measurement to cut the blocks you're going to be installing to straighten the joist out. And that would look something like this after you were done. And again, I'm not about to suggest you're going to need all of these blocks. You might only need one or two blocks because keep in mind that these blocks could create floor squeaks later on. The more blocks you install, the higher the probability that the floor could end up squeaking. And again, if you're starting with a straight joist, you're just going to need to measure the distance in between the joist to find the measurement for your blocks here. And then once you wedge these blocks into place you'll straighten the joist out. Now you can always use some type of a jack and it's probably going to be a screw jack. A hydraulic jack might not work on its side. However a screw jack would. You could simply place the screw jack in the areas where you have already installed some blocks and then try to move the joist. Now if you are using a jack and you're putting a lot of pressure on the joist and it's not moving, then there's a good chance you still have some nails left in the floor sheathing. And you might want to double check to make sure all of those are removed. Otherwise, you could end up 
putting enough pressure on this joist to move it or loosen the nails that are attaching the floor sheathing to the joist. Now if you don't have a straight joist to start with or you need to double check the joist to make sure it's straight, you could always install a parallel string line or attach a screw or nail to the center of the joist at both ends so that you can attach a string to both of those ends but before you do that, try to locate the nail or the screw as close to possible at the end. Otherwise, you could end up with a situation like this, depending upon how bad the joist is bowed. So you can see where if I attached it back here, which you're probably not going to be able to because the joists are usually going to be sitting on top of walls. So again, be aware of how the location of the screws or nails could change as you're adjusting the joist if they're too far away from the edge of the joist. So here you can see where we have a straight line. We've ran our string all the way across and now all we need to do is move the joist over to where the center of the joist here is going to be located in the center of the string. And for those of you who don't know how to use a string, how to create a tight line that can be used to straighten the joist, I will put a link to that video in the video comment area. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So here I have a straight string located in the center of the joist. And of course over here I do not. And you might need to adjust the joist in sections and this might require multiple blocks or positioning the joist and then nailing the sheathing from above to prevent it from moving. Otherwise the joist is going to be off a little bit. And of course once I have straightened out one joist I can just simply measure from that joist to either the center or this side of the joist to cut our blocks to straighten the next joist or even the next few joists. And instead of doing this, you could always use a string that is going to be positioned somewhere else and parallel to the exterior walls or parallel to the other straight joist in the building. And of course, that string can run all the way across again so that you can measure from the string to either the center of the joist or the edges of the joist. And again, this is going to be a little bit easier than running a string down each one of the joists. And again, use this if it's going to be easier. The main thing is to create one straight joist. And once that straight joist is created, you're going to be able to pull all of your measurements from that joist and will no longer need the string. And after we have straightened all of our joist, we can go ahead and take a look at the floor sheathing from above to understand what I was talking about when it comes to the breaks in between the pieces of plywood floor sheathing that now are going to need to be adjusted somehow. And about the easiest way to do that without doing any additional work to the floor sheathing will be to add some type of a nailer board. And this is a board that can be nailed to or screwed to, fastened securely to the existing floor joist. However, it will depend upon how bad of a bow you had in the floor joist as to whether or not you're going to end up with a situation like this or a situation like this. And of course, this situation right here might require a wider board along with some longer screws or nails to fasten it to the joist. And by installing the nailers, you're going to eliminate the need to modify the floor sheathing somehow. And don't be afraid to try something different. Here we're taking a couple of blocks and attaching the nailer to the blocks and the joist along with the floor sheathing. So here we have a 2x4 on edge where we can go ahead and nail through the blocks here and nail into the 2x4. And if you don't like this idea here, you can simply position the board differently so that you can again nail through the blocks here into your new support joist so that you don't need to modify the floor sheathing. So not too difficult because if you have to modify the floor sheathing by cutting it back 
So we're going to cut back a little bit. Now the reason why I haven't cut this all the way is because again we're going to have a wall sitting on top of the floor most of the time and then just cut it back a little bit. And once we cut this back we're going to create a gap in the sheathing which means we're either going to need to fill a small piece of sheathing in here or take it back to the next joist or the other joist or even cut the sheathing half on this joist and then half on this joist so that you can install a larger piece. Sometimes the minimum size for a piece of plywood or OSB floor sheathing is going to be 24 inches which means we might not be able to fill this piece in. However, at the same time, if we don't do this and we go back to the next joist, then we're going to end up with a smaller piece here. We might have a two foot piece here or larger, but we might not have a two foot piece or larger over here. And I won't be able to make that decision for you as to what type of method you're going to use. But I can tell you that you might need to block the floor sheathing around the perimeter also at these edges. Now I don't have a block here because I might be able to slide the tongue or the groove into this edge here which will take the place of having a block there. So just make sure that you have support where it's needed around the perimeter of the sheathing break so that you can install your new floor sheathing without having a weak spot at this edge or this edge also. And let's go ahead and wrap this video up by leaving any questions that you might have about this particular repair in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.